Hello there. With all this talk of Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland wanting to leave the UK, is it time that England also spoke up? Right, just to let everyone know from the outset, England will never be allowed its own unified voice within the United Kingdom. There, that's got that out of the way. Now, in a thought-provoking piece in The Express, columnist Robert Taylor says that it is now time for a vote on English independence. And when you look around the UK at what the English get out of the Union, he has a point. And he talks about the inequity of the Barnet formula, taking money out of English taxpayers' pockets to be redistributed about the rest of the UK, and also that without the likes of the left-leaning Scottish politics, England would be able to shrug off the shackles of the hard left and its wokeism. Something that the Labour deputy leader Angela Rayner alluded to when she said Scottish independence would lead to a permanent Conservative government in England. Although I have to say that I don't think the SNP Marxist ambitions would last the first year of independence, let alone a full parliamentary term. Anyway, part of this drive for more power to the English, goes the argument, would be a proper devolved assembly for England. An English parliament with its own assembly members separate from MPs, just like the Senate, Stormont and Holyrood a body of politicians and an executive that would act purely in the interests of those people living in England, just like the devolved assemblies in Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland rule their own roosts. But an English parliament that started pointing out the obvious about who pays what and to which areas of the UK would be more likely to break up the union than any amount of politicking by Nicola Sturgeon and her SNP especially as the Welsh, Northern Irish and Scots assemblies would be insisting on their much smaller assemblies being totally equal in all respects to the much larger English assembly, including voting with English money. Now, there was a concept to turn English MPs into a sort of English assembly within Parliament, using a system known as English Votes for English Laws, or EVIL. But this was recently dropped in case it put more pressure on the cohesion of the UK. Better that the people in the devolved areas have much more power and money per capita than those in England, went the thinking. Especially if you can cloud the issue and muddy the waters. And they have found the perfect way to do that via devolution within England, but not devolution to England as a single unified country or region. No, by slicing England up into smaller regions under vastly powerful mayalties, competing within England for English taxpayers' money. And if these regions can be smaller than Scotland and Wales, for example, then all the better, because the voice of England would be split and silenced and the long drive to abolish England will have taken another big step. Be in no doubt, the only time the English flag is acceptable is for the odd sporting event. And the worst of it is that while English nationalism is nowhere to be seen, the SNP, Plaid and Sinn Féin proudly wave their flags and point at the English as the ultra-nationalist and nasty ones. Terms like Little Englander abound whereas the label Little Scotlander would fit very nicely around the neck of Nicola Sturgeon. And in Sturgeon, Scotland, everything is the fault of Westminster. Drug deaths, failing education, no ferries, dodgy deals where some businessman takes the Scottish taxpayer for a ride must all be the fault of Westminster and by implication the English. And do you ever wonder why there is no such thing as BBC England? No, all we get is local regional TV stations. In fact, throughout all of this, the English have proven to be the only tolerant ones, while they face signs hanging over the motorway saying, keep England out of Scotland. But there is always a limit to tolerance. 
but without their own political assembly, the English can never be heard. They will never be able to articulate their concerns, because to give the English the means to do so would be to awaken a sleeping giant. And that is exactly why the English will never be given their own voice. All we will be offered will be the carving up and further destruction of England and the English identity. Simply put, divide and conquer.